What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review for Greenleaf Season 5, Episode 1, the final season. Now, <clears throat> I'm hearing that there's going to be a spinoff, so it's the final season for Greenleaf, but we will still get some shenanigans from the Greenleaf family in the spinoff, whatever that's supposed to look like. But I must say to everyone that I am a little underwhelmed with this premiere. Let's go on and get into it. We start the episode off with, we have Grace, we have um, um, the Bishop. They are standing in Calvary. We know we ended last season with them finding out that the grand plan is that they are going to tear the church down. Um, so Bishop is there to say goodbye, you know, and him and Grace are standing outside and, and they're gutting the church. Basically, they're throwing away all of the old Calvary stuff and, you know, Grace is like, Bishop, why did you even come down here? Like, doesn't this depress you to see them basically throwing away your legacy? And he was like, nope. He said, I've always learned that it's best to see things when they die so that you know for sure that they're not coming back. He said, and that way you don't block whatever God has planned for you next. And I was thinking, you know what? That is deep. Usually it's Lady May with the with the little stuff that you be like, huh? But that one was kind of deep, Bishop. That one was kind of, oh, oh, one minute. Sorry, that one was kind of deep. Um, but neither here nor there. Bishop eventually is ready to go because he sees them throwing away a cross. And he said, now that does make me angry um, or make me sad or whatever. He said, you know, to throw away. And he, he, he again, gave us this a nice twisted use of the English language to basically say a cross. Okay. I think he said something about the skeleton key into God's kingdom, child. Okay. Um... Then we see, then we get to the house. We see Lady May is fasting, honey. Lady May says she's going to fast until God tells her what her next move is. She is drinking hot water. Uh, Marisol is like, at least let me give you some tea. She said, nope. She said, well, what if this lasts for 40 days? She said, well, look, Jesus saved the world with a 40-day fast. Imagine, imagine what I could do, you know. Y'all know Lady May child. Um, Aaron comes through and he says he needs to talk to Grace. Um, he's got some news for her. Then, um, and the news is basically, okay, I'm gonna get to that because I want to go ahead and say this too. Then we have Jacob and, um, Carissa and, you know, she's showing Jacob the will or whatever. And Jacob was like, this doesn't prove anything. She was like, yeah, but the innuendo is pretty bad. And especially coming from Mac, like everybody always already wants to think the worst of Mac. Like, hey, this can't help. And so Jacob was like, well, what do you want from me? And she said, I just want you to take care of me like no other, you know, in this divorce, like no other woman in the history of Tennessee has ever been taken care of. He was like, all right, whatever. Call your lawyer. Give me a proposal and let's figure it out. Now, the look on Clarissa's face when Jacob walks out the room lets you know that that ain't really what she wants. Like, she doesn't want the divorce, you know. Um, and there's a part of me that's like, now, Jacob, when you was out there philandering, she took you back. But then you think about how bad things really were between them. Like, they've had more bad than good in the, the, the four prior seasons of this show. So, I mean, I think Jacob is just kind of over it. Anyway, and she just gave him the perfect opportunity to be like, you know, deuces. So then we see um, baby girl, Grace's daughter, baby girl. Um, and she's talking to her basketball player, you know, and he's like, when can I see you again? And she was like, well, how about tonight at six o'clock? And he was like, all right, you know, I'll pick you up. She was like, nope, let me come to you. Because, you know, Keisha's still at the house. I don't feel like dealing with Keisha. I don't feel like dealing with um, Zora. He was like, Keisha's still there? She was like, yeah, she's pretty much a fixture. She, um, he was like, well, I need to figure that out. And when he hangs up the phone with Grace, I mean, not with Grace, with Grace's daughter, you know, he sort of has this look on his face like, you know, and I thought they were going to show us more, but they ended, they didn't. We'll get back to them later. Um, then we have... Um, Charity, before she leave the house, honey, lady may tell, call her all kinds of Benedict Arnolds and she's a traitor to her family. So, of course, Charity is like, whatever. So, she gets to church and Philip is like, listen, we can right Phil, whatever. He's like, listen, we can right go into this meeting and I just need to make sure that we are on the same page. And she was like, listen, my family hates me. Uh, I have no love life. Uh, I don't really have no friends. This job is all I have. 
So if you think I'm about to, you know, screw it up, you have nothing to worry about. I'm not going to waste it. Like I've been waiting to be an assistant pastor my whole life. And basically for what I had to give up to get this job, trust me, you ain't got to worry about me. So then we see Grace, Aaron, and um, her son. Um, and here's the part. Okay, so this is part of what I'm, I'm not happy about with this season premiere. We left off last season with this whole question mark of who was the boy by the grave? Was it a ghost? Was it a real person? Was it Grace's real son? Like, who was this guy in the dress, the light-skinned dude in the dress? Now, maybe we as viewers put way too much into that scene, but you made it the very last scene of the season finale. You had to want it to mean something. Well, what it meant was he ended up getting getting killed in a shootout, and um, the police now think that he was responsible for all of the robberies of the pharmacies, including the one that um, AJ was accused of, the, the pharmacy, the, the one that he was accused of doing. Now, so basically, AJ is off the hook. He don't have to worry about going back to jail. All is good. Now, Grace nor AJ are happy with this information, and Aaron was like, but, which I'm, like, like I expected y'all to be a little happy with what's going on here. And Grace was like, listen, thank you. And the reason why I say I was a little underwhelmed with that, because a part of me was like, okay, so was that an angel that, you know, did God send an angel to sort of get AJ off the hook so that, um, so that him and Grace could, you know, really figure out this situation and figure out a way for them to really become a family. You know what I mean? Because Grace even said that. She told him, she said, listen, you know, can you just be happy that God saved you? Like God spared you. And he was like, yeah, but both you and me both know I did it. So basically they think, I'm, I'm just getting ahead of myself. Anyway, basically they think that he did it. But what happens if some new evidence comes up and then they write back to looking at me as a suspect? So he really hasn't put his guard down, even though he understands that right now he's in the clear. But he's like, listen, I did that shit. So at some point, he just feels like the other shoe is going to drop. Now, Grace, of course, immediately recognizes that that is the boy from the grave. And so now she's really confused because she's like, so wait a minute. He was just wandering through the property. And where he ended up getting killed was only a couple of blocks from where they, their house is. So, you know, and he was like, yeah, the police feel like, you know, he's been wandering around, you know, doing this for a while. We'll get back to that. So, I, like I said, a part of, I'll, I'll, I'll give I'll, I'll flesh out my whole reasoning why I'm just not okay. So then we have Jacob talking to Aaron, and he had Aaron look over the will, and he was like, "So that doesn't mean that you know my parents had this person killed to get this house." And Aaron was like, "Well, no, this isn't like definitive like proof in a court of law. However, it ain't a good look." And you know, Jacob was like, "Yeah." That's, you know, I was afraid you was going to say that. And he, you know, Aaron told him point blank. He said, listen, I hope whoever is using this over your head, you know, I hope you find a way to, you know, y'all find a way to make peace with each other. Because basically Aaron is letting Jacob know, listen, if this person decides to use this little bit of evidence against you, it probably ain't going to look good. So, you know, he knows that he sort of has, um, that Clarissa has him over a barrel. But then Jacob does the craziest shit, y'all. Why? <laughs> He gonna take out his phone. He gonna say, "Sorry, call Joyce Meyer." And I was sitting here like, "How Joyce Meyer gonna help you out of this, Jacob? You gonna ask her to pray for you? How Joyce? What Joyce gonna do?" Because in my mind, I was like, "Why the hell is he calling Joyce Meyer? Like, what is Joyce Meyer gonna do to help him out of this situation?" Child, why was really um old girl going back to season one? That he had the affair with. That was Max's assistant. Girl, I see it. I don't know what I'm more. I don't know what I'm more tripped out about. The fact that he still got her phone number. In his phone. Or the fact that he had her in his phone under Joyce Meyer. You was all kinds of wrongs for that one, Jacob. All kinds of wrong. Anyway, keep it moving. So, um, then we see Grace um, go down to the... Um, the newspaper to meet up with Rick Fox. Listen, listen. He was sitting there looking at her like, "What? The, what are you doing here?" And you know, she was like, "Well, you know, uh, 
he was like, well, thank God. He said, are you my new editor? And she was like, no. He said, oh, well, thank God for that. He was like, well, can I say that, you know, it, you know, consider you not the pastor anymore. And she was like, listen. If you knew the kind of year that I had, you wouldn't even be asked. You would know that that ain't even funny. He said, well, if you knew the kind of year I had, you would know that I wasn't joking. And she was like, well, you know, here she going past the mode. Well, what happened? What's, what kind of year did you have? He said, trying to get over you. Boy, bye. So she asked him for, she was like, I need a favor. Now, personally, I'd have been like, I know you didn't, so I said, yo, son, you know, Shantae, your ass down here to ask me for a favor after I ain't heard from you since you decided we needed to take a break, child. Boy, bye. But, you know, he was like, well, let's go have some lunch. Tell me what you need. So she wants him to go check out, talk to anybody he knows in the DA's office to find out really how rock solid this whole situation is with the dude. Like, do they know who this boy is? What's his name? Where he's from? And how convinced they are that he did all of these robberies. Like, she wants to just double check that everything is everything. Now, while this is going on, <clears throat> we have Phil meeting with the Deacon Board um, and Charity. And he's basically, they're talking about how for the next year, while they're building this new huge edifice, they're going to be tearing down. Well, they knew they were going to be tearing down um, the church. And they're going to be having church service out of a, a high school gym in the meantime. Baby, them deacons, them old deacons from Calvary, oh, they not happy about that one. A including uh, 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 old girl, uh, what's her name, Coretta, you know what I'm talking about. Ain't happy at all about it, right? And um, Charity showed her natural black ass in that meeting. Honey, she started talking about, and I guess you're wondering who's going to be leading the church in this charge. It's going to be me. He was like, um, every fourth Sunday, not every you're not going. She said, and I'm going to be my new, I have, and I'm already ready for my new series on black women of the Bible. What? That's what you're going to be preaching on? That's what? Okay. Or was it black women in religion? Whatever it was, or black women of the church. Whatever. It was going to be black women, because you know, y'all know she feeling some kind of way about that white woman coming and taking her man. So, then she going to say, <laughs> she going to say, so, you know, make sure that you are here every Sunday. He was like, every Every fourth, not every Sunday. She's not gonna be preaching. Every it's not gonna be the fourth, the fourth Sunday. Child, Charity show her ass. You hear me? And Charity's friend, um, the um the minister, the music minister, um, Carlton. You know, he had this look on his face, like, yeah, I'm not feeling all of this. I'm not feeling none of this. So he ends up going to Charity's office after the meeting, and of course, Charity is in her feelings. You know, she feeling crazy, you know, feeling some kind of way. And he was like, listen, he knocked on the door. She talking about some praying. He said, well, can I interrupt your conversation with Jesus for a minute? Because I need to talk to you. She looked at him. She was like, not if it's more bad news because I can't handle it. And he said, listen, Charity, I have worked way too hard to be singing. I'm going to put these words in his mouth. White gospel, white church music in a school gym on Sunday morning. So he's about to quit. He was like, yeah, I kind of got to do that. She was like, so the day did get, did get worse. And he said, listen, me and you still friends. We still going to see each other out. But I, this, I ain't signed up for this and I can't do it. It was bad enough that they had us singing the watered down, you know, gospel music every Sunday. But now I got to do it from a, from a school gym. No, man, Pam, I ain't signed up for that. And Charity is just, and she is just like, I, I can't like, he said, she said, well, I wish I could quit. He said, oh, no, 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 no. This is what you've been waiting for. Like you... You've wanted this your whole life. Like, so you can't quit now. You, you've got to do it. And I feel like a part of Charity wanted to say, but at what cost? Because that's what I was saying in my mind. Like, you've been wanting this your whole life. But at what cost, boo-boo? At what cost? So now we have um, 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 Jacob. He don't went to go find Miss Alexis, honey. He just showed up to Miss Alexis' apartment. Alexis looking bad. Y'all remember how Alexis used to look when she was sleeping with Jacob, honey? She was looking kind of bad. A little raggedy, a little skinny thing. And in my mind, I was thinking, Jacob, I know you're not about to go over this woman's apartment and try to rekindle things after you done left her high and dry for the last three, four years. You got her fired from the church. Then you messed around and got her fired from her next church because you was going to that church and Carissa didn't want her there. 
So I know you're not about to go over there and try to sweet talk her now that Carissa done really messed up. But to Jacob's um to Jacob's credit, that is not why he went over there. He went over there because she was Mac's assistant, and I had forgotten that part. Um, and he was trying to find out if because what um Aaron told him was you would have a lot more leverage if you could find the original will and see what the major difference was between the two wills to see who could, who would stand to gain or lose based on from the old will to the new will as far as that house is concerned. And so now he's on the hunt looking for any of Mac's old papers. So he was actually asking her if she knew where Mac kept his papers or anything like that. And she was like, I know you did not bring your ass up over here to ask me for something. Like, after the way you did me and the way you carried me, I know that's not what you came up in here to do. I know that's not what you came up in here to do. Now, what we also found out is that she got a little girl. And baby, the whole time, all you saw was Jacob in his head doing this with the calculator, trying to figure out, carry the one, subtract the two, and figure out if that baby could possibly be his. And he finally just came right out and asked her, so is she? Girl, why is she going to tell Jacob? I wouldn't have kept your baby. I said, damn. Damn. But I think she lying. Anyway, I'm be honest with you. I think she lying. I think that baby is Jacob's. But I think that's something we'll find out as the season goes on. Because I really think she's lying. Um, but she finally does tell Jacob that Mac had a storage unit and, you know, she's like, I ain't been over there. I don't have a key. But, you know, she said a part of me is scared to find out what's in there. Cause she was saying how people, you know, she, people been coming after her when they found out that she was Mac's assist assistant. She was like, as if he was bringing the women up into the office, the little girls into the office. And I knew what he was doing. She was like, I was just his assistant. I didn't know about none of that, but you knew he was dirty. You couldn't be his assistant. And I know he was doing some shit. He wasn't supposed to be doing. You might not have knew about the girls, but remember Mac was into a whole lot of shit. He shouldn't have been into, but that's another, neither here nor there. Ain't no need in, in relitigating Mac's life child. He was what he was. So Jacob goes over to the storage unit, and this is the other part that wasn't really true. Now, anybody that know anything, you know good and damn well. You put stuff in the storage unit, you don't. You get two months, maybe three, maybe three if you have a sob story. Maybe three months to go without paying um, on that storage unit. I know when I had stuff in storage, baby. If I was if I was ten days late, they were sending me a good old email saying, "Ma'am, ma'am, are you going to come pay this storage? What you going to do?" Come to find out, Mac's stuff been sitting there for two years. And the man going to have nerve. He First of all, he's going to open up the storage unit. Now, I don't know what kind of proof he showed Jacob. Because all of that should be under whoever was Jacob's um, executive of his estate or next of kin. So, maybe it was Jacob. But I, I guess by default, it would have been Grace. And I guess maybe if Grace didn't want to do it, it would be Jacob. But even if Jacob was the executive, he should have been responsible for paying that bill. And if the bill wasn't paid, all that shit would have been gone. Ain't no way. He, the guy going to open up the unit, let him go into the storage unit, then going to give him a bill talking about something. Here's the bill for the outstanding um, amount for the last um, two years. Child, I want somebody to show. Put it in the comments. Y'all tell me of a storage unit that's going to let you keep shit in there for two years. Hell, they auctioned off Paris Hilton stuff, and they know she had the money. But she ain't paid that bill. Moving on. So... He tells the guy, well, all right, I'm going to go ahead and bring it up and, and go on and put another six months on there because when they opened up that unit, that shit was packed. And he was like, I know I ain't about to do all this in one day, child. I got, I need time to go through all this stuff, child. So then um, Grace, she goes over to the basketball um, dude's house. And he opened the door. As soon as he opened the door, he looking guilty. I said, oh, Lord, what's going on? Nikki is over there. And he said, well, we trying. He said, well, you told me to figure it out. So we trying to figure it out. She was like, but does that mean, like, figure it out, like, are y'all getting ready to get back together, figure it out? And he was like, he hesitated. He hesitated a little too long. She was like, you know what? Don't even worry about it. I know it takes time for people to end things. I ain't even mad. I'm just disappointed. And, baby, she rolled out today. I said, I know that's right, Grace. You better keep, I mean, um, uh, uh, what's the girl? What I say the girl's name was? Anyway, you better go and keep your head hot, whatever, child. So Sophia, Sophia, what's the baby name? Y'all know who I'm talking about, child. So Grace is talking to AJ and she convinces him, you know, that everything is good for now. And, you know, let's go out tonight for dinner like a real family. He was like, what, to celebrate? She was like, yeah, you know, a little bit. Like, you know, we got that behind us. Let's move forward. Let's try to figure this out. And I was thinking, okay, it's going to be a rocky road. 
but they're gonna make they're gonna figure this thing out and he agrees to do it you know she was like let me call um baby girl and i'm thinking baby girl i already got a date but okay you know this was before i found out that he blew her off then we have um Charity gonna go over to Phil's house, honey. Now Phil is taking down pictures of Charity, and he having that whole somber moment where he's staring at her picture and all this other stuff. So she comes through there to give him um his wedding ring, um his engagement ring, and he gonna tell her to keep it. She was like, for what? As a consolation prize? He was like, listen, I still love you. She was like, well, if you love me, why are you doing this? And he tells her, he said, listen, Bob is making me do it. You know. Basically, he told me if I ain't marry his daughter, I couldn't have a church. He was like, I've been working for the last 20 years for this. And I just couldn't, I couldn't give it up. She was like, mm, but you had no problem giving me up. Deuces. And she puts the ring in his hand and rolls out. I was like, well, Charity. I mean, they tried to tell you, child. They tried to tell you. So, the, um... Um, a couple of the women came through to see Bishop. A couple of the deaconesses came through to see Bishop. And he was, she was like, listen, they didn't tell us nothing about tearing down Calvary and doing all this extra stuff when they had us vote. And even, um, even Grace encouraged us to vote, you know, vote in favor of Calvary. And he was, Bishop was like, yeah, because he really wanted to keep the peace. They were like, well, it didn't work. He was like, we were trying to work out another plan. They were like, well, it didn't work. He was like, yeah, it didn't work, but you know, Basically, y'all still did it. Like, y'all still voted against me, is what y'all did. Y'all voted against me. Y'all voted against um against my dad. Like, y'all voted against, I mean, about against my daughter. Y'all voted against us. Like, so you can't put all of this on grace. Y'all made that decision. So now, of course, they want him to come in like the white knight on the horse and come and save them from their bad decisions. And he was like, well, listen, let's pray. Let's sit down. Let's pray. Let's figure it out. Child. I don't know what kind of picture. Anyway, so then we have Rick Fox calls Grace. And he says, listen, I didn't figure out why Bob is here. Now, here's another part that I'm just, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm a little dis, um, I'm a little dissatisfied with. They have been building this up all last season that Bob was had this grand scheme and he was coming up with this grand plan and he was doing something on a grand scheme and why he was being so deceitful and doing all of this and doing all of that and coming after the green lease. Like almost like it was a personal thing. Well, come to find out he's doing all this to establish residency and to, you know, make charitable donations and to build this huge multicultural church because he's running for Senate. And I was just like, I'm not naive to the world of politics or anything like that. But in my mind, I was like, really? Like, that's what we doing? All of this? All of that? Mm -mm, nope. No, ma'am. Pam. Wasn't buying it. Didn't like it. Don't like it. Didn't like it. Wasn't buying it. Don't like it. I don't like how they built all of this up for that. Like, I, I I was waiting for, like, a basic situation where there was some sort of grudge, some sort of, like, that house belong to his great grandmother so, like i'm waiting for something deeper it's got to be something deeper y'all i'm not going that is not that's not doing it for me then i, I think i'm almost done i just want to make sure i'm almost done so now the bishop goes and talk to lady may and lady may because the bishop was still mad at lady may and um he said listen marisol told me that you were over here um that you were over here, um, I'm sorry, shoot, um, sorry about that, y'all, that you are, um, fasted, and she was like, yes, and you can't talk me out of it, I'm waiting, you know, for God to give me, he said, no, 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 I, I need to talk to you, so he tells her about the women coming to get him, to try to get him to save the church and this, that, and the other. And he said, you know what? He said, but I got a better idea. She said, uh -uh, I, I can't do no more schemes. Well, I'm just going to be disappointed in the end. He was like, no, this not no scheme. This is some good old-fashioned. He said, let's just start another church. But this time, me and you equally. Not my church and you're my first lady. We will be equal co-pastors. He said, after what I saw you did with a day with Lady May, he was like, I was jealous. I was in awe, but I was in and I think that the two of us together can build something great. 
he said. And so, of course, she was down for that because that's all she'd been wanting all along. You know what I'm saying? So she was down for that. He said, so what we need to do, we need to go on down here. He said, the first thing we need to do is go on down here to this to this uh, courthouse and go on to get married. Okay? Because y'all, you already know how they're going to feel. We got to be married. He said, and then I'm going to get your ass something to eat. Well, he didn't say ass. I said ass. But then we're going to get you something to eat. So next thing you know, honey, the text is going out to all of the green leaves for them to come and get ready for this wedding. Um, you know, Clarissa was like, are you sure you want me there? Um, 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 uh, Sophia then showed up half naked because she thought she was going over her basketball boyfriend's house to get bust down. In the words of L. Teddy, um, shouts out to L. Teddy. Um, Clarissa and um, uh, Jacob ain't speaking, but of course they ain't told the family what's going on yet. And Clarissa gonna tell Jacob, well, I talked to a lawyer and she's gonna give me a template of what I of what I'm gonna need. And, you know, so you can get your lawyer. He was like, nah, you got me right where you want me. So you're going to get what you want. So it ain't no need me, you know, ain't no need spending more money on another lawyer. It is what it is. He was like, and damn sure not going to spend my money. I said, but again, the look on Clarissa's face is saying, I really don't want this divorce. But girl, you're just digging your, you digging your heels in deeper and deeper. So while they're out there, all of them, you know, getting assembled, getting in the cars on their way to go down to the justice of the peace. AJ is missing. And so, um, you know, Grace was like, well, where's AJ? And, you know, everybody's like, well, I thought he was with you. Like, he, he, we ain't seen him. He's not there. So she goes up to his room and she ends up busting, and, you know, he, you know, he ain't in the room or whatever. She's in the, um, in the, um, bathroom. The bathroom door is locked. So she ends up busting the bathroom door down. He ain't there. He done committed suicide. Now listen. Y'all gave us a whole storyline of this little boy. And although I'm sorry about the situation, I feel like it was a really unnecessary turn we took last season. I feel like you got me real invested in something that did not pay out. I don't understand the purpose of him being on this show. I don't understand the purpose of this whole storyline. And if it was just to bring Noah back, y'all could have found another way to bring Noah back. Hell, Noah could have just came back because he missed um, Calvary. He missed Tennessee. He found realized that he was really like there was other, it was other ways to bring Noah back on the show. Hell, we ain't even seen Noah since he was at the bar. Now I see we're gonna see him next week, but we ain't even seen Noah. So I was just like, what was the purpose of this whole storyline? And then we had this whole thing with the robbery and you know him going up to Hampton and he stole the damn medicine and and then then we had the whole situation with the boy by the by the cemetery was it a ghost was it real was it like y'all gave me a whole lot y'all took me down a whole long and winding road for nothing because you brought him on the show just to kill him off for no reason i i put it in the comments if y'all find me give me a good reason why he's on the put it in the comments okay give me a good reason why he was there because i don't see it anyway this was long enough let me know what y'all think drop it in those comments peace